Something else I thought about, NBA owner uh, owners yesterday and star players went on a conference call uh, with Adam Silver. And Adam Silver, I think, was stronger and more defiant than he had been. My takeaway on this entire situation we're in right now, UFC, NASCAR, and the NFL have flourished. NASCAR will this weekend. Why? Because they have a centralized voice. Dana White, a centralized voice. Roger Goodell, what did he say? Stop talking general managers. Stop talking coaches. What Adam Silver has not had until yesterday when I sensed it is, I'll do the talking, a centralized place, strong leadership going forward. I also think something else is in play here. If we do not have a vaccine... If we do not have a vaccine and nobody's predicting it before the end of the year, it will not only affect this NBA season, it will affect next NBA season. This is really a business move. Now, we know right now in America, the safest people with the virus are people under 35, especially those in amazing shape, professional athletes, the NBA. Um, There's a lot of things at work here, but yesterday I was more encouraged on the NBA than I have been at any other time. Rick Buecher was on my show a couple of days ago, and he talked about the sense of urgency inside the league now. The hard reality of it is that the NBA needs to get back to business or their, their entire revenue structure with the salary cap and everything else is going to be crushed. And I am just waiting for the owners. If there's any pushback from the players on resuming this season without a vaccine, that the owners are going to say, if you take us to there, we're going to hit the nuclear button. We're going to blow up the CBA and we're going to start this thing from scratch. And you're not going to like the term. I don't know that they get there, but I know that that's in the owner's back pocket. Listen, you ever see those bumper stickers? Mean people suck. But mean people, sometimes Michael Jordan, they get stuff done. Dana White can be mean. Michael Jordan. The bottom line here, strong central forces get stuff done. This is not a time to be rigid or take sides. The stronger the voice is of Adam Silver the better it is for the NBA. And yesterday was the first time I sensed urgency and a willingness to manage a pandemic and not be consumed on the pushback on social media. So it felt like a good day for the NBA. Uh, One of my favorite guys, uh, outspoken, uh, and and always a good sense of humor. We're going to bring him on via the Coward Global Satellite Network. Ennis Kanter, longtime NBA, has played almost a decade in the league. All right, let me start with this, my friend. Um, yes, sir. I always like your perspective on stuff. You're kind of you're a global kid. You were okay. you, you were born in Switzerland. You moved to Turkey, then to the United States at 17. So this is a this is a global pandemic. Would you be comfortable right. knowing you're in great shape? Uh, you're you're a younger human being, which appears to be statistically the data points say you're safer. Would you personally be comfortable coming back and playing in five to six weeks? I mean, I'll be just, first of all, I'll just say this. I don't know if, I, if I'm going to be in a game shape because like, you know, people are talking about coming back or not. But the thing is, you know, a lot of, if we come back, uh, if we don't have enough time to come back and get in game shape, a lot of the players are going to get hurt. So I th- I feel like even if we come back, NBA needs to do a really good job just giving us that like at least like four or five weeks period of time so we can get ready for, you know, the in, in a game shape because we are about to, you know, may, maybe they uh, play the, playoffs but i think you know if it's all safe to go i think so now um a centralized location now i will say mm-hmm. this young american players they go summer league right. in vegas um mm-hmm. you know i mean so so the, does the centralized location like disney world are you okay with that are you okay with no fans i mean it's of course it's going to be awkward man like think about it's a eastern conference finals us against the you know somebody uh, there is no fans, no tree, no clapping. Of course, it's going to be awkward. But like, you know, right now I feel like all the players are just itching to go out there and play basketball. So like, I feel, I'll, I'll, I'll be like, if it's all safe to go, I'll take anything. But like, I heard Adam said a lot of the, you know, the cities are calling the NBA and want to host the players, uh, and they're thinking about either Orlando or Vegas. 
actually Adam even said first they were they even thought about moving the NBA outside of a country, but then they're like, you know what, it's, it's going to be so hard to just move move to a different country. So that is out of the conversation. But right now, they like you said, they're looking either Vegas or Orlando. Now, Shaquille O'Neal said, you know, there'd be an asterisk if uh, somebody won. And, I, you know, I don't worry too much about that because I look at it that basketball is part of our culture. We love it. Right. And if the playoffs were good, Ennis, we, we would just be so happy. I, I, I don't worry about that. Mm-hmm. I mean, if Boston won, you faced what everybody else faced. I wouldn't look at you as less of a team. I, in fact, I would make an argument. I am more impressed with a team that could win without playing a home game in the playoffs. So what do you make about the ast- the, the asterisk article or, or issue? I mean, man, I'll just say this. I, of course, I mean, like, I'll, I'll give you this point. You know, some of the you know, teams are open up the practice uh, facility early. Some of them are not pre- open up the fa- facility early, and they're saying if it's, it's, if it's fair or not. But you know what? I mean, I'll just, like I said again, man, right now, it, it is going to be challenging for every player and every team. So for me, I'm just going to go out there and just see what the NBA uh, NBA uh, going to say. Now, Adam Silver yesterday, um, mm-hmm. he has a phone call, and he sounded, um, I would say, more confident it was more encouraging yep. D- does it bother yep. you that it appeared yesterday adam wanted to get the top stars in the league on board and they're going to drive this do you resent that at all does it bother you that a handful of stars will make the call on this i mean i feel like that handful of stars like uh, i think that was like five or six of players uh, was on that call needs to communicate with us because obviously not all of us is like a superstar whatever but we are all in this so it's not like there is a risk for everybody so i feel like those superstars that you like you said five six players or whatever needs to communicate with us and say what do we what, what do we think and what adam said whatever the nba decide player has to agree with it too so I feel like, hey, maybe like those six players wants to go out there and play, but there is some players out there might not want to play. So I feel like it has – like NBA is like a big family, right? So I feel like we need to communicate all together, 450 players, not just only six or seven players. How good a shape are you in? Do you work out? Uh, I can go jogging where I live in California every day yeah. next to my house, so I do. Uh, right. and, but can you, you. Are you working out? I mean, we still have these virtual workouts with the Celtics. They call in us like three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. We actually get on this FaceTime call and try to, you know, just see what strength coach uh, going to tell us to do. But, like, it doesn't matter how much you work out, you're not going to be in game shape because the game shape is a different shape. So that's what I'm saying. Like, if the season starts, right, and if the players are not in, in a good shape, a lot of the people is going to get hurt. So I feel like we need – at least like three, four, whatever weeks to just get back in a close to the game shape. So once the season starts, we can just go out there and play our basketball because like once the playoff starts, man, it's like it's you either win or go home. So you got to give everything you have. So I just don't want other players to just risk their career and get her big time. And it's going to affect them in a long, uh, long run. Now, have you talked to players that aren't stars? If I said to you the last 10 players you've talked to, do they share your opinion? What do non-star players think? Do they want to play? I mean, we all, let me tell you something, man. We all want to go out there and play. We all itching to go out there and play because obviously, you know, just it is it's an amazing time to just let your body heal. But same time, man, it's like we've been at home for like two months, so we all want to go out there and play. But every player is saying the same thing: if it's all safe to go, we want to go out there and play. Okay, so the MJ documentary, The Last Dance, mm-hmm. I imagine you're watching it. Now, I don't know how yep. much you paid attention to the NBA 25 years ago, but uh, you used to be able to tackle people, basically, in the NBA. <laughs> like uh, a football, yep. <laughs> yeah, what do you make of Jordan? Um, how much have you watched Jordan before? What do you make of the documentary? Right, I mean, you're talking about goosebumps. That is, you know, that that's what you get when you're watching that. I think that's, like, the best way to explain it. But, like... I, just, I think just watching him, his dedication, his discipline, his love for the world, it was just on a different level. He had this mentality that only one player had, and it was Kobe. I don't, and I don't see another player had that have his mentality, you know. So like, I think watching that it just gives you so much hope and motivation. And uh, so I feel like I met him when I was 17 years old in New York. It was like a dream came true. I'm meeting with like the greatest player of all, all time. 
But like, it was just amazing, man. I'm just sad that it's just going to only one episode left. I know. I know we only have one weekend left. Ennis Kanter is yeah. joining us. You know, it, it is interesting about that. We we said, um, Giannis, you're an international player. You moved here at 17 yeah. years old. Giannis could be the next face of the league, but he's kind of a little bit quiet. He he has no, you know, I wouldn't say he's a glamorous guy. Jordan was a little more glamorous. Um, is there a next, if LeBron retired tomorrow, is there a next mm-hmm. Who is the next face of the league for you? I mean, if you look at like the like a, in a game play advice, it's like it's either going to be like Giannis or Kawhi, but they have I feel like they have no you know personality. You need to have that you know the brand going too. It's just not like going out there and playing forty eight minutes and getting like thirty and twenty and win. It is all about the fans want to see you just you know just personality. What LeBron does is like he talks about some of the off the court stuff what matters to people he got a lot of personality but when i see like say some of the superstars right now they don't have that personality so i feel like and the next could be i'm trying to think um jason you know what? jason no tatum idea. is jason tatum have a personality it, it could you know what he could be it he, i mean he's like people like thinking like he's quiet he's a fun dude man like he's a really good teammate like you know fun to be around he makes jokes and stuff i mean i think jason tatum going to be in an mvp conversation for sure either next year or next uh, couple years so is your family okay by the way they doing okay man it's 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 tough because all the all, with all this uh, pandemic now i mean i am worried about him because it could just you know affect them uh, and i might not you know maybe get you know, see them again. But all I'm trying to do right now, man, it's uh, trying to create awareness of uh, what's going on over there because there's so many political prisoners and, you know, just uh, journalists are in jail right now and waiting for help. Uh, if the virus spreads in jails, it's going to be very uh, deadly and uh, dangerous. Yeah. And as Canner, one of my favorite guys, ninth year, it's good talking to you. Stay safe. I appreciate oh, you wait, taking man taking time and keep going on those zoom things and doing sit-ups <laughs> or whatever you have to do my man hey i still got the herd shirt by the way so look, look at that loyal that's the kind of loyalty i like we're back in the <laughs> studio buddy i appreciate it yep all right yep, thank you brother good good stuff ns canner